Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for watching my video. I'm about to show you some of my most recent discoveries that have helped me to seriously improve my drawings of human form. So I think it's also going to be really helpful to you. And if you like this video, then I want to encourage you to get the full length version of it where you can draw along with me step by step. And you'll find that at my website, muraljoe.com. We're going to do uh, two lines, symmetrical lines, to create the hips, like a set of parentheses. So let's go like this. Curve right here, curve right here, and now we've got the waist and the hips. So just let your imagination visualize that shape there because this is what helps to create the rest of the form is immediately seeing it but strategically having lines that help us along the way. Make a curve right here. Decide the width of the ankle and just make a little curve like this. And I think why this works so well, this is my theory, is that this is the natural motion of the, the leg, the calf, the shin getting out of the way, curving out like that in order to make room for the ankles to come across. So this is what I think is just awesome about this this system. That concave allows for the ankle to go across right here where it curves when we're walking. But when we're running, there's this higher concave where the knee scoots over and that's where the heel and the ankle come across being a wider part of the foot. The calf muscle is wider. When those wider parts bend and come forward, you know, when you're running, this allows to run like a wheel on a single line. And then I'm going to put shorter and shorter, two more straight sections bending under the thumb that I haven't drawn yet. One, two, and now I'm going to put two curves. One curve above this first knuckle, one curve below it, and a little smaller so that it ends right at the same height as this knuckle right here. So when I hang my hand to my side, you'll see, you'll see this thumb coming right down to this knuckle. And you can see those curves even on my hand. This curve above this knuckle, this curve below this knuckle, stopping at this knuckle. So you can always rely on this relationship to put a quick hand in place. So a little line that divides the thumb from the rest of the hand. And then I can go one section two sections, three sections, maybe a fourth little pad. I just did these one, two, three, four little pads on the hand. And then a line going across here if you want to show how the thumb, the skin on the thumb goes over. That's all the detail I'm gonna mess with on this one. Make lines from where it's growing and then make lines from where it's going. Make lines from where it's growing and then lines from where it's going behind the ear. We've got a little bit of light, some reflection going across that way. Lines from here, lines from here, like this, like that. We could put a little part in the hair, and then we could put hair coming down here behind the shoulders, behind the ear. But we don't need anything real fancy. I just want to show you that little trick that you can do. You can leave uh, some, some very quick impression of some lifelike reflection by just making lines going from each end of each section of hair. And it, and it leaves, this, leaves this little bit of reflection in between. And so now we've got sections of these muscles that connect to the bones. Let me show you how that works. We've got collarbone right here. Let's make a little, a little uh, smile shape right there for the middle. And then let's put lines going over here, put a little line under it, just like we did on the female form. So we've got the collarbone. There are muscles that come and connect to this far corner of the collarbone. So if I put a little line going like that from the corner of that collarbone, toward the armpit, then that is a natural divide you might see from the fibers of the muscle. And then we've got another uh, large section that goes to the sternum. And then you might see a divide across the middle of that uh, going toward the armpit 
again. So a little line aiming toward the armpit. Then the last real significant divide that I've noticed is where it switches from being connected to the sternum to being connected to the ribs. So you might also see a line or two going up right in here where these start to slope apart. So armpit to the to the base of the sternum, now it's connecting to the ribs and you might see multiple little strands of muscle all coming out from the armpit. This is where they connect. Then the shoulder connects to, let's put a little line that goes like this. The shoulder is connecting to half of the collarbone while the chest is connecting to the other half of the collarbone. So we've got the chest connecting to the inside half, shoulder connecting to the outside half. Now. I'm going to put two little lines going like this for the throat going down to the collarbone. Look, I've got it kind of offset. It's okay, my, my body's not symmetrical either. Let's go like this, two little lines right here instead of one line to divide the stomach muscles. And then we'll have a diagonal line here that kind of wraps under the base the top of the ribs, the base of the sternum. And this is a stomach muscle that goes across. We'll put another one halfway between this and the belly button at kind of a downward angle. And then we'll put two more little lines here. And by not connecting these together, we're just making the look of uh, the shadows on muscle. So we don't want to put real dark lines here because they're just shadows on the front of the person. So if I make them dark, they look like deep, creases, wrinkles, you know, but if I make them light, it looks like more artistically done shadows. Let's make a light shadow that comes in from the armpit, makes a little triangle shape, kind of disappears and then reappears as it slopes over this way to make a shadow between the hip and the belly. So let's go over here, make kind of a triangle shape disappears and then comes over here, aims this way to make a shadow between the hip and the belly. So remember this line right here, I'm finding that line and making a shadow along that line instead of just the line itself to create a more lifelike hip. Then if you put shadow in here that gets lighter as it goes up, it creates a curve and we can put the belly going across right here. This is where the the uh, stomach muscles come down and kind of flatten out right there. Now we've got this more three-dimensional concave to the belly. Wrinkles make stars off of high points and low points. So we've got a high point, that's the shoulder, and so we're going to have very light wrinkles making a star across this way. Just very light because this is a form-fitting area. The shirt's made in that form so it doesn't really stress the fabric that much but nevertheless it is a high point and you'll see star shaped wrinkles now if you make stars off of all of the low points armpit is a low point we make a star off of that but we're going to end up with crisscrossing lines you don't do that the stars can form to each other's direction so on an armpit we do lines like this up toward the shoulder from the armpit, a couple lines that go like this, and then they curve as they go out over the chest, they're gonna curve up toward the shoulder. They would curve up toward the shoulder here as well. Maybe make one little slope right here, but make it bending sideways as it goes around the hip. Just making some zigzagged lines to change direction to going sideways, like that. And then I'll put a little bit of shadows in place like this. I was thinking maybe I should put like holes in the shirt, you know. <laughs> maybe another day. T-shirt's more rock and roll, you know. So that hairstyle says T-shirt.